Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. So the next photo is of Warsaw Central Station. Let me let me just describe because you're you're you were there, you made the photo. I'm just looking at it now and it's okay, so there are th- hundreds of people, thousands of people, massive massive crowd. Uh some yeah. people are wearing well, people are wearing masks. So it's relatively contemporary. Everybody's wearing winter clothing, some people are wearing hats, toques, that kind of stuff. Uh, every once in a while here and there are people wearing the, the fluorescent sort of light reflective uh, vests that, that signify that these are like supporters or support crew. There are all these little panels. Um, you're, you're shooting from very far away, so it's a very wide shot. And yeah, like the, the, the architecture of the place is a very large room, but there's these massive support beams right at the top of the image going across and there's there's like cordoned off areas the people so so why don't you explain to us where we are and what this is okay so this is warsaw central station with refugees coming in from ukraine uh they are they have got to the border um somehow they've got to the border on trains one thing you'll notice is, which is really strange, is there's very little rolling luggage. Right, right. In that picture. You, you would imagine everyone would have rolling luggage. There's a lot of people with plastic carrier bags, but not with rolling luggage. And that yeah. was because when they were put on the trains, they arrived with rolling luggage, the refugees, and they couldn't fit the luggage and the people on the trains. So they oh. said, you're going to have to throw your rolling luggage. Now... Right. Yeah, because you imagine when it's like when you get on an aircraft, yeah, yeah, with your roller bag, right? That takes up an awful lot of space, and right. the whole purpose was to get people out. As of many out, Ukraine. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if you can imagine a train load of people with all their luggage, it would be impossible. Right. So these people hadn't. These people had nothing, and. They had even less than nothing in plastic carrier bags. And one of the great needs that I spoke to later on to one of the guys who's organizing stuff is for more rolling luggage mm-hmm. so that they can decant their stuff into, into carrier bags. Right. The people in the yellow vests are all, they're not NGOs. They're just people that got up and said, I need to help. Wow. And I met a guy called Ed at Warsaw Central Station. So imagine the station, those huge white beams, Mm -hmm. and then you've got uh, a poster on the wall with a Spanish flag, and it says Madrid. And then there's a poster on the wall that says Rome. But they're just stuck on the wall with with sellotape, right? Mm -hmm. They're stuck with sticky tape to the wall. And there's a lot of young volunteers underneath in yellow jerkins. Uh, luckily, the phone companies really got their act together and they have stand after stand after stand giving away SIM cards uh, wow. to, to the people that are arriving. So there is a great need for two things when they arrive. One is rolling luggage. The other one is cell phone. Mm-hmm. So you landed there. You just like, okay, I'm motivated. I'm going to go. I'm going to try to help. And you just went and you're just like, like what, how long did you plan to go for? Like, what was the, the preparation? What was the, what was going through your head to make you go out there? First of all, my first role was how can I help the most? Mm-hmm. So I, I started scrounging, phoning companies and saying, I need stuff for Ukraine. Mm. Uh, and I, I used all my business contacts. I got Griffin uh, to supply battery banks. Mm. I got a company called iBlazon to supply phone cables and battery banks. Uh, I got a company to supply backpacks. Mm-hmm. And then it just sort of snowballed and people would phone me and a guy phoned me and said, do you need sweatshirts? They had all brand new in boxes in my warehouse in Belgium. Well. Wow. I said, how many have you got? He said, I've got 1.2 tons of sweatshirts in boxes you can have. Wow. So my next job was to get a supply chain going 
to Warsaw. And I phoned up an old distributor that I knew in Warsaw called Adam and said, can you give me some of your warehouse? To which you would probably, of course. And I said, can you help me with your logistics? He said, of course. Uh, and he said, I'll put two staff on it as well. So he then started collecting stuff from all around Europe. Mm -hmm. And then, so, so really, my role wasn't uh, to wear a, a gilet. Mm -hmm. It was to to organize supply chains, logistics, right, because right. Uh, we've heard so much of the Russians not organizing logistics. Mm -hmm. So then I started to put a call out on Facebook for cell phones. Right. I said, please, can you supply cell phones? They can be old Nokia's. They can be as long as you've unlocked them and I have the unlock code for them and you've wiped them, send them on over to me. And my apartment now is full of cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in England at the moment. Okay. Uh, I've, co I've come back to the UK, and during the course of that station photograph, I got called by people who'd heard I was on the ground, some people from the front line, in fact, mm -hmm. and they were organizing and buying ambulances in Warsaw and getting them driven by Ukrainians to the front. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there was an awful lot of non-NGO just turn up mm -hmm. and, and help. And I met this guy call, called Ed, uh, who was a young student who had gone on holiday and decided to give his holiday to the central station in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. He had a Union Jack badge on. He was meeting people who wanted to go to England. He was meeting English people a me and he was the only guy from england doing it there was no disasters emergency committee or right oxfam or yeah. anything like that just a guy standing in the middle of the station with a union jack badge on mm -hmm. uh who i went to see and that's that's early days and when you have a disaster be it a, be it an earthquake or something like that it takes the ngos time to do things mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. always You'll always find it's local help that starts, yeah. you know, lo locally motivated people. So that really sums up that that image. Right. So this photo, when was this photo taken? Just to give me a, a sense. Uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Okay. So, wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and they're still coming and they will still be coming. Yep. They are... That you, you know, everyone thinks of Kiev as being uh, Ukraine, mm. but you know, some pe some people have a three hundred square meter farm that they live off in the countryside. Mm -hmm. You know, they they've got a couple of pigs and, and 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 you know, one car and maybe a phone if they're lucky. Right. But they are people that just live off a small holding. They don't, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they have, have then been thrown into this thing and they arrive at the station. And, you know, people have impressions of what Ukrainians are like. There are people who are very old, who have dementia, mm -hmm. who need wheelchairs. Of course, things yeah. like that. They're not, they're not all supermodels and, and good looking people. Mm -hmm. um, they are poor Romani people. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're you know. Well, there's a diversity yeah, there's a total diversity and a total need for help from mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, I think most of the refugees, the, the larger portion of the refugees went through Poland. Yeah. And, you know, you're looking at sort of the crowds are just immense. Yep. But the one great thing about that picture is I went outside Warsaw Station and there are tents outside with food and stuff that people are giving to them and everything like that. But the kids all seemed happy. Okay. The kids were incredibly resilient. It was the mothers that weren't resilient. Well, the kids had met other kids on the train and they were kind of, yeah. it was an adventure for them. Well, okay. So here's a, here's the thing that I see in the image. One, it's taken from far away. So it's hard to see, but look, the reality is the mostly female right? It's mostly women yeah. in the image, the few kids here yeah. and there. One of the ugly realities that's coming up at the, at the moment is that in a lot of these sort of let's help and shelter these kids, 
there are some, no, sorry, <laughs> in a lot there are some. No, there are some stories coming out of some kids being taken advantage of, you know, in terms of sex, sex trafficking and all this stuff. And so it's, for me, it's heartbreaking and it's, I mean, it's uplifting because people have mobilized to help, like you, people have mobilized to help, but like what a disaster to happen and i'm you know like it's these are people who are just living their lives and then all of a sudden it's kind of like an, a total nightmare a total nightmare uh, i mean anecdotally this is anecdotal from a, a u.s soldier he said there were 500 orphans that were there but the ukrainians were helping them as well so if you're a mother and you've got two kids and there's an orphan, you're going to look after that orphan. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Sure. I really don't know anything about sex trafficking. I right. Mean, I, I haven't, I, I didn't hear anything of that. It, it may have happened, but I think that there will be issues in the beginning. You can't have 2 million people yeah. and say, you know, that nothing's going to happen bad to them. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's it. I mean, if you think about Paul Warsaw, it's dealing with a crisis that requires education. It requires yeah. doctors. It requires it requires people who speak Ukrainian because a lot of yeah. Ukrainians don't speak Polish. And I think what will happen is, as this whole thing settles, there will be doctors, dentists, teachers, lawyers, and they will form communities. Uh, and what I've said is about all these people who want to take a refugee in is – those refugees, what they want is work. That's mm -hmm. their number one priority. They want to be able to work to to make things for themselves. Yeah, and that and they want a community. Mm -hmm. You know, they want these women want to see doctors who speak Ukrainian, who who they trust. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the important thing. The other thing that's absolutely key is the morale of the troops on the front, who know that they're wives and kids are safe that gives yes. them a huge amount of uh yes of energy yeah so the people arrive in poland then they go out from poland uh, to moldova romania the whole of the eastern nato group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that and they go into uh the place and everyone like the german all train fares are free all mm -hmm. flights are free if they want to go somewhere, they can go there for free. Mm -hmm. They are being well looked after. Uh, and that probably leads me on to the last of my photographs. Okay, then I will take your lead. Um, let me look at it. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes, shooting it raw.